Shabazz Palace's Exotic Birds of Prey mini album review. Let's chat about it. Hey friends, what's going on? John here from What's Spinning here tonight to chat about this latest mini album of sorts from Seattle-based experimental and abstract hip-hop collective Shabazz Palaces, headed as always by the legendary Ishmael Butler of Diggable Planet's fame, and they are an act that at one point uh, really that projected my love of hip-hop into a more modern, more experimental territory there. Debut album years ago, Black Up. This album, I heard it, and I thought I had found my new go-to. And I stress this, if you find yourself as a fan of JPEG Mafia or Death Grips or Clipping, you definitely should give Shabazz Palaces, at least their early EPs and the Black Up uh, debut album, uh, their fair share of credit because they really were ahead of their time. However, very shortly after, even though my hopes for this project were through the roof, uh, the cracks of the foundation were being shown very quickly. Their follow-up, Last Majesty, I mean, there are certainly some great tracks on there, but overall, the consistency on this thing was way down. In 2017, we got two albums from Shabazz Palaces, uh, Quasars vs. The Jealous Machines and Quasars Born on a Gangster Star. And by this point, uh, the band was really running out of ideas. I mean, there were some great singles here and there, some cool concepts, but overall, this double album that we got just was not up to snuff. And 2020 is the dawn of Diamond Dreams. I didn't review because I had no idea this album came out. And when I finally got around to listening to it, yeah, I mean, I'm not shocked uh, that I haven't heard about it because it's really not that good. I mean, by this point, the band's concepts and ideas were fizzling so thin. And in case you're new around here, last year's Robed in Rareness rose the bar on mediocrity. I thought it was the worst hip-hop album of the year. And if it wasn't for the Django Django and Smashing Pumpkins album, Albums, it would have been my worst album of the year. And we are back less than a year later, and I, I don't know what I was expecting going into this mini album. I just, my morbid curiosity got the best of me less than a year later. What does Shabazz Palaces have to offer? However, the singles leading up to this mini album, I really did enjoy. They caught me off guard, mostly because of how dark and gritty they were. And honestly, this EP's not terrible. Nah, this 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 mini album's not that bad. What do what do you know? It's it's really not. It's actually worth your time. Exotic Bop starts this mini album off featuring Purple Tape Nate. And from a distance, it may seem like business as usual from Shabazz Palaces, but I actually rather like this beat. It's got some grit to it and just has a lot of depth once again. It feels like this isn't just some half-baked idea that was thrown together and recorded. It's very visual and at least important for me, uh, Shabazz Palaces brought their songwriting game to the table because this is a little bit more tuneful and yes, it's still very abstract and rough around the edges, but at least it sticks with you. There's also a mystery and a mystique to this track that I haven't heard from Shabazz Palaces in ages. And also, Purple Tape Mate just keeps popping up on their projects over the last few years. This is his best feature to date. He sounds really decent, actually. You see, this is why I always go into projects like this with an open mind, because I'm impressed with this opening track. Also super impressed with Angela. I love the weirdo beat and the vocal sample that we get here. It's very colorful, very animated. It almost reminds me of Mad Lib's alter ego, the great Lord Quaz. I mean, this track just slithers along, and there's just such a denseness to it. It sounds so evil. It's a formless track that, from a distance, doesn't have a lot of direction, but there is something about it that is deeply intoxicating. It's honestly done with a lot of care. Also really love Myths of the Occult featuring Japreme Magnetic. And listen, this is a pretty freaking bizarre project, much more than I figured that we would get here. This is a warped, twisted jam that's really short, not so sweet. It's very evil sounding once again, but I'm just happy that I'm back in the good graces of Shabazz Palaces, if only for a moment. The creeping beat is just so, ugh, so weird. The occult imagery is really great, and Japreme Magnetic's verse is also really sharp. It's once again very intoxicating. I actually wish this project was longer. Who'd have thunk?
Also, take me to your leader, this mini-albums finale featuring LeVar, the star friend of Shabazz Palace's uh, sort of person that just kind of pops up on a lot of their projects once again. And honestly, this was a single, and as weird as this track gets, and it gets pretty freaking weird, I really enjoy it. This track is not an easy one to get into. It's six minutes long, but in a weird way, they do such a great job detailing it. This track feels like it has its own little world. And listen, seeing a plus six minute track come down the pipe on a project like this, I was shaking in my boots. But this, once again, still has so much more personality than what they've shown on their last few projects. Uh, it has no right working as well as it does, but it's very entertaining and just completely bizarre. It's a big risk, but it does pay off. Uh, yeah, I mean, to an extent, I am kind of impressed here, especially with just where Shabazz Palaces have been lately and just how uninterested I've been with them. But then we have tracks like Goat Me featuring Cobra Coil. And if anybody was looking for the fluff on this EP, this mini album, whatever you want to call it, you're looking for the fluff. Here it is. Uh, this is like flipping a light switch. Ishmael is much more prominent on this track, uh, but this beat really doesn't have a leg to stand on. It's sloppy, it's disjointed, and it's much more annoying than anything. This is really what I expected to hear a lot more of. And then this track just kind of meanders for three minutes and doesn't really do much. We also have well-known Nobody featuring OC Notes. I mean, hearing Shabazz Palaces on a track like this get a little raw, a little noisy, a little harsh on the ears, that should be exciting. It sounds nice from a distance, but let me tell you, this track is a disaster. Uh, mostly because this track has absolutely uh, no leg to stand on. These sounds like, I don't know, it sounds like Ishmael's like unfiltered thoughts, but like not even the interest in ones. There is no structure, and synth dirt really isn't that good either. I mean, to an extent, it's got some interesting elements to it. I really love the narration. It sounds like something uh, ripped out of, like, Night Springs from Alan Wake. If you don't know, now you know. And the atmosphere is actually pretty cool, too, but this very short-winded track uh, just needed to be expanded upon more. It's honestly not that bad of a mini-album from Shabazz Palaces. I mean, their last, like, four or five albums have just not been interesting to me or as interesting to where the band used to be uh, but this actually puts things back in an interesting direction their ideas are coming to them much easier from the looks of it because this is easily the most creative thing they've done in a while it's dark it's a cult it's bulky and i don't know something about this just seems like it has its own little unique little world and i'm just happy to be hearing shabazz palaces you know get back in that direction I just really wish that the consistency was up to snuff as it once was. Uh, but still, considering where they've been, I will take a light six on this project. But let me know what you all think down below. If you like the video, be sure to give us a like, give us a subscribe, and let me know down below what you would like for me to chat about in the future. And until next time, have a great day, friends.